Hi everyone, welcome back to this How to Be a Modern Samurai part four. Now we're working from this How to Be a Modern Samurai 10 Steps to Finding Your Power and Achieving Success by moi, Anthony Cummins. And uh, today we're on step four, which is um, building a fortress. Not exactly literally constructing a fortress, but making sure there is like a fortress style atmosphere around you. So let's give it a go and see what we come up with. The first step, which I think is really interesting, is this first quote on page 61, which is when you build a toilet, build it high enough so that a samurai can use it while they have their personal banners on their backs. I think this gives a, an amazing image of the fact that samurai have to go to the toilet, uh, which is why a lot of the time they don't wear hakama underneath their armour. They're just wearing normal trousers, thinner trousers, and they actually, you can open them like a fly basically and quickly get them down uh, but also this idea that your house has to be practical it's okay having a beautiful house ostentatious having this that and the other but if it's not practical it's of no bloody use whatsoever and also another zen uh, sorry not zen another esoteric aspect to from east asia is the idea of a house the yin yang of it or the um, substantial and the insubstantial which is the most important part of a house the walls or the area in the middle it's the same as the old riddle about the jug which is the most important part of a jug the walls of the jug or the area in the middle without um if the jug was solid you couldn't pour water out of it it would be useless it would just be a bit of clay the same as a house if all the walls were in a line you couldn't use it so the the inside space is the important bit so the 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 uh the actual thing to learn here is that in your house there are important parts and there are non-important parts and they must be practical and that before they must be stylish now from the point of view of home defense um what you've got to understand is that your garden has to be able to be defendable so in this idea is that no matter what size your garden is um you should technically have something to stop somebody battering your door down you should try to wind them through paths to get to your door so that there isn't a direct line unfortunately my garden literally has a direct line to my uh, door so i've made my door go outwards so it can't be kicked inwards and if i'm being attacked i can literally open my door outwards it's the only way i've got around it beyond that you have to build a wall in the middle of my path which i can't do at the minute because i'll have to sell the house at some point uh kill holes and death zones so work out the angles from your house where you can actually uh attack people outside from if you're getting attacked if uh, it all goes to pot how can you hit the outside people where are they gonna go um so noise making devices and lights i've got a bell on my um, gate so that whenever the postman comes or if uh, somebody comes in i hear it now because i live next to a holiday cottage i used to get my house uh, my, the wood in my garden stolen all the time because the people had come on holiday realized there's no wood and a few of them would pop across nick the neighbor's wood me so now i've got bells attached to everything so it's ling ling in the middle of the night and they're like Ooh, somebody's nicking me wood so i open up my kill zones and that shooting them um, trees and bushes use them as natural defenses because they look beautiful and uh, of course that leads on to defending the home now some samurai enthusiasts like myself actually have samurai armor in the house but at the moment mine's packed away just because i've got a very compact house so it's getting in the way a bit but i do have it so you can in older days samurai would actually have uh, armor to worship as an ancestor so there is uh, that aspect of worshiping hachiman or worshiping an ancestor through your armor in your house now positioning of swords and spears now uh, basically in your house you should if you've got weapons about like that yep then you should and there are others uh, you should have them placed correctly so for example here the door is in front of me from here but my sword is on my right so i can grab it by the hilt and be ready uh, if it's on the wall uh, if it's on the floor it should be on the left because you've got to grab it and pull it out. But because mine's on the wall, you've got to grab it here. If it was on the wall this side, I'd have to scrape it down the wall to take it off. It's the same with my bow is up there, just over there. And you can grip it down and I can retreat back to the kitchen where the height of the ceiling is high enough for me to draw a longbow. And there are actually arrows on a shelf above that. Uh, I would get up and show you all this, but uh, it changed the format of, this video, of these videos. Uh, of course, I have wooden things with axes all over, but traditionally in samurai houses, you would pick up a sword would be on your left on the floor or on, on a stand because you have to draw it that way. Uh, on the right, you would have a spear that you could pick up and charge with and you would put 
projectile weapons in a way that you could pull and draw them towards the main door okay so you've always got to be careful of where the weapons are in your house for americans where there's gun licenses where do you keep your guns are they accessible can you get them and move forward etc etc very militaristic but these are the points you have to take into um these are the points you have to take on board so that your house is not aggressive or offensive but practical now you should have a place to honor your ancestors i upstairs in my bedroom have a a shinto altar at the top but i also next to that altar have um pictures of my family family lineage now i can name my family lineage back 10 generations because my father luckily did the research and i'll shut my eyes and show you so my name is anthony john cummins son of john joseph cummins son of john joseph cummins son of john joseph cummins son of william peter cummins son of margaret that's the only female in there who is the daughter of william who is the son of william who is the son of john who is the son of john that takes me back to 1700 so because my father did that research uh, with one blip there in the female line so i can go back five in the male line and ten on our our total line but I can name them and I know my ancestry and I know my um, origin point from the coming side of the family now uh, of course I also have heraldry now heraldry is a difficult thing because you like which heraldry do you use a lot of it's generic out there be careful when you just get your crest from the internet it's not normally so what I did is I took the generic elements of the Cummins crest and I made them into um, a specific one for me so the elements of the Cummins crest are a wheat sheaf or three wheat sheaves or a lion rampant, a lion rampant with a dagger or a sword. So I have actually combined all those uh, and I have got them framed. Uh, I've got a picture coming from abroad from a friend who's an artist who's doing my full heraldry, my full crest like that. One day I hope to register it with a British um, heraldic office but it doesn't matter, it doesn't stop you using it, you can make your own crest, as long as people see it's yours, and I have paid, for quite expensive actually, stamps, the rubber stamps, they're not expensive, 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 but more than you would expect, I've had my own stamps designed, and that means any paper I um, sh I print can have this, so it's got the Cummins there, it's got Natoru School of War, and Kugakukan Natoru Headquarters, which is my dojo, so this is the school I head, that is my family uh, crest, for, and I've called that the uh, Cummins Crest of Lancashire. And that is Kugakukan, which is my specific dojo inside there. So I am me, Anthony, the head of this school. And inside of this school, I am the headquarters here. And I put them on the top of letters and on the back of any envelopes going, it's there again. So anybody who gets the envelope can know, okay, it's from Cummins. And that's the idea of being of identity. And you can put that around your house to show that you're like, okay, this is a Cummins. It's not got to be too much. Let me try and show you. Can you just see above there? There is, the, that's my uh, tartan, which is both from my grandmother's side and my Cummins side, and also the heraldic device, the standard one, which comes with the, the tartan. So when people come in this house, it's not overbearing, but they start to see a pattern of, ah, Cummins, Cummins, oh, okay, tartan and heraldry, and I see it, I see it's Cummins. So don't be over the top, but have enough that people are like, I see your identity. I see where you're going with this. This all com so also combines with uh, the sort of book of death. Now, uh, I've not fully constructed this yet, but I'm getting there. And that is the idea is you have a book of those who have passed on, those who people who are dead. And you can go through it, say, at Halloween, when you, um, Festival of the Dead in the UK. Or if you do it through Obon, the Japanese style, then you can show, oh, this is a festival in the dead. In the school I run, Natori, we actually have a book of the dead. And so far, only one student has died. Uh, they were just quite old so uh, when they died. So we celebrate their life every year and as the years go on more and more people die we'll keep that book of the dead going so that you know in your house somewhere there's either pictures of the dead a corner for the dead an altar for the dead or a book that shows the dead so basically you've got to remember those people who've come before you who've died who you knew so that you don't like end up being old and going oh do you remember i had that that friend who died you know something like that you've got to keep the dead alive now you can protect your home with talismans. Now for this home, I actually have gone for a Western tradition. I prefer Western traditions in the West. I don't do Japanese things so much here. So here I have an iron chain, which is outside my door. And that gets rid of, iron gets rid of anything that is malignant. Uh, also a horseshoe, which is considered lucky. I also have a, a breadstone, which is a type of perforated stone that has been polished by the sea. And uh, there is one thing I'm looking for, and I can't find it, which is a stone with a natural horseshoe 
hole in it. Those are Western style talismans for Western style houses. You can have Japanese style talismans, you can have Chinese, you can have anything you like, just a talisman. So what I've done is I've put for download on my website, just check out my website, the download in the downloads box of the Anthony Cummins website is here. And that is a talisman used against thieves or infiltrators. And that's there for you to download or you can scan it from the book, your choice. Have a place for artistic display. In my house, the artistic display is up the stairs because I've got all the art I like it on the stairs uh, or you can have a central piece with a vase with ikibana flowers in it you can have anything you like whatever it is it's got to be a focal point that people can talk about when they go around your house normally this should be in the main living room and uh, i have a lovely pair of antlers there in the living room as it was my focal point and people uh look at those and go oh okay tell me about the antlers and the idea is that oh my computer's going mad the idea is that they're there they focus the people's attention so you don't want a television don't ever set your front room up around a television it's the most it's a social killer it kills all conversation so set it up I, all my seats go into each other away from the telly and uh, focusing towards the fire and then people can chat and i have a table in front where we all have drinks and every time people have come here uh, they just sit and talk next to the fire occasionally i've got a couple of friends who like to watch a film and i do must have it grinds on my my uh, teeth a bit when it's like oh let's watch a film it's like let's just chat instead since you've come all the way here we could watch a film anytime but you know that's the way of the world try to accentuate nature um outside your window so if you have a view a really bad view outside your window try and change it put some trees some bushes some plants whatever you can do make the view out of your window nice now i have a gorgeous view here i live in the welsh countryside so i've made my garden very nice and i've made and right a across me is gorgeous trees and a hill the only problem is i have a very crusty old bus stop right outside my house so uh, but unfortunately i'm not allowed to knock that down but i have covered it with a screen and plants and ornate things so make sure from at least the window your guests are in it looks nice have a go at the tea ceremony in your house now this is a bit of a sticking point for me is people think you have to be a master of tea to have a go at the tea ceremony it's absolute nonsense you have to be a master at tea to be a master at tea you don't have to be a master to have a go at something it's like saying uh, you know i will have a go on a skateboard oh you're not a master of the skateboard so you shouldn't do it absolute nonsense if you can afford to if you've got the time if you've got the leisure then build yourself a mini tea house they shouldn't be big so it's not a case of you're building something massive you're building something quite small and quite compact but if not just have a tea set my tea set is right there and um, it doesn't have to be the traditional whiskey tea it can be the steeping brewing tea but the point is is when your friends around get some stuff out get a hot iron kettle on a bit of a heat stove get your tea ready pour it out show them how it's done give them a little bit of a treat to have a relaxing cup of tea make tea less than do what a uh, more than do what a brew make tea about the sit down relax enjoy talk about the pots and and then have a bit of a sweet bit after after it relax maybe do it in uh the outside where you can see the be beautiful parts of nature or if not have a little mini tea house if not i usually get the fire going here and on the table clear to make sure everything's clear and i sit everyone down and everybody relaxes especially when i do my natori ryu weekends i bring them in and we always start with a lovely cup of tea japanese tea relaxing chatting let people get to know each other and that's lets them come in easier now, for those who don't much about the, don't know much about the tea ceremony, I've give you a full list here on pages eighty and eighty one of how to actually do the tea ceremony. Oh, sorry, all the way to sorry eighty three, getting the tea ceremony done, building the place, what you've got to do. I give you a detailed list of everything that you need to follow so that you can give a traditional Japanese tea ceremony. And this predates the tea ceremony we get today. This list was actually taken from Western accounts of um japanese tea ceremony in the 1500s so if you're actually going to page 83 in this case and 82 and 83 you're actually getting an older tea ceremony than the ones they do in japan at the moment and goes back or at least you know they've changed a lot in japan this goes back to some really early records of course we've talked about the garden but this time where well, you've set up your garden as strategically as you can to keep away intruders but then you've got to add beauty to it. So now you've got your layout like a castle. So you make sure that nobody comes in unwillingly. You've got bells to set off alarms and things like that. Now you actually start putting the beauty into it. Like, for example, um, flowers, 
I actually don't grow flowers in my garden. I grow things I can eat. So I grow strawberries, uh, blackberries, rhubarb, all of that sort of stuff. But it looks gorgeous. It looks really good in the summer. And I've made a platform, a decking platform for people to sit on. There's fire chimneys out there. It's gorgeous. And there's I now grow. This year we've built a new um, patch. And it's actually going to be full of sage. I'm going to go and spend loads of money. Probably about £100 on sage plants. And just get them to grow. Because sage tea is gorgeous so i've got mint and sage and the two teas together are splendid and you i cut up my apples from my apple tree or from a local apple tree put them into sage and mint let them stew and have apple tea again mix it with your japanese tea ceremony and i've also got a bonsai tree growing out there i've got a few and they're on the table as display pieces and they're growing as the years go on and i tend to them so it's absolutely gorgeous out there in the summer it's not in winter because it's freezing but we can have a little bit of a, a bonfire night out there sometimes so make sure that your garden looks nice it's got things like bonsai in it it's got fruit or herbs or things that are useful to you but that are also beautiful so make sure you arrange it in a nice way okay guys let's go through the checklist so make your home modest yet secure while making your home pleasing put in place man-made and natural defenses for it stop intruders understand that the way of the samurai involves weapons and uses those to symbolize a warlike approach to life you should own and display two swords, like I showed before, and uh, all representations if you're not legally allowed to open uh, to do them. Place your weapons in an ordered manner around your home so that it can be used. The use of talismans for magical protection. Honour your ancestry by devising your old heraldry. Commemorate the dead by displaying photographs and compiling a death register, or know your ancestors off by heart, like me. Uh, build a sacred area in your home. Have a de dedicated place for artistic displays. Make a nature window or at least have nature outside of your window if possible. Build a tea house or hold tea ceremonies in a specific place. And create a garden in the Japanese style and grow bonsai or of course in your own style and uh, but still you can grow some bonsai everyone likes a bit of bonsai. So there we go guys that's step four that's the castle bit the, the bit you should keep in, uh, in your home to make it look feel and be as though you're following that warrior life it, there's no point in having it on the surface outside or when you go to the dojo it's got to be here in your house it's got to start at home basically the warrior starts at home so there you go guys get yourself a copy of that how to be a modern samurai uh it really helps me out pass these videos around subscribe and enjoy of course this is in a playlist so in the future there'll be one ahead and there's one before if you've missed it okay.